right, we are back with another update on the Dakota swap here. Quite a bit more stuff done. A lot of little things, but the main key points I wanted to go over in this video was the fuel system and running your factory gauges. There's a lot of questions about that and I get a lot of different mixed ideas of what to do. Um, and at least for these ALH swaps, and it worked fine for the BEW too, I leave the factory fuel tank, or I leave the, the pump and everything alone, and then I go ahead and I'll show you in here, I find, so we've got the, the main feed line to the old um, fuel injection system, and this is an evac or return line. Not 100% sure what it is, but I go ahead and take these up and right here behind the brake lines here, I've got a kind of a bypass T, like an H fitting, and it's right before the factory fuel pump or fuel filter up there. And so what that does is I'll just set the pump to run all the time and almost every one of these factory pumps, if it'll pump gasoline, it'll pump diesel. And I'm actually running multiple tanks of black diesel through this stuff without issue. These factory pumps will really do quite a bit. So anyway, um, I was just going to show you guys what I do to get it ready. And so there's the two lines going up to the factory fuel filter with the, the T. Let's see if I can get it there. The T in the middle. It's a bunch of hose clamps, but... It works pretty well and then the only thing I do to set it up is I found the factory um, fuel pump relay and I'm gonna wire that to key on and just be on all the time but for right now we're just gonna go ahead and give it power and just like that we are emptying the tank as soon as that line is empty, we're getting all the gasoline out of there. You can go ahead and fill that, fill the tank up with diesel. And you could even run it for a little bit before you go and try to start the engine. But it's already going to be mixed enough that a little bit of gasoline won't hurt anything. So as long as you pump this thing till it's empty, and I'm just going to let it run here, you will be good to go there and you don't have to do anything else with the fuel system so I'll go and plug this plug this line into my other line there right here and that will be the end of my fuel system hookup and so let's see just to get up here this big thing I gotta climb up in it um, everything's getting pretty packed in here as usual but the fuel system as you can see comes right up here right over to my injection pump and again I did the same thing on the PD and I don't think that the tandem pump needs a specific pressure either because that H setup gives it a couple of PSI at the most and it is working perfect so anyway and then the next thing I wanted to go over was your factory wiring a lot of people are doing this and they are trying to make a connected harness, I guess. Put put the swap vehicle's harness into the Volkswagen harness. And I don't know, for me personally, I just kind of like leaving everything separate. So right now, as you can see, the, the factory wiring is still laying there. And it goes around. And I've got it tucked up over there for right now. I'm just going to make sure I don't need any other sensors or any plugs before I cut everything off and clean it up. And then I can get get all those extra plugs there cut off and, and just isolate all the wiring there. But um, I think I have a picture here. I'll load it of my coolant flange. And you can see up there is the factory um, Chrysler 
coolant sensor I put that on the back of my metal flange and then uh, you can see the, the factory Volkswagen one will be there as well and then again those were all in the line right there so I just left it there and then I also teed or spliced off of the um, the oil filter or the oil pressure sensor was back there at the back of the engine and I went ahead and spliced those wires and I have it plugged in right here that's the factory oil pressure sensor for the Dakota and then this would be a little different it'd be pretty normal for any other vehicle but since I've got this Jeep Cherokee transmission I wasn't sure what I was gonna have to do to splice in the um let's see if I can pull it out here oh it's kind of buried splice in this the crank sensor is right here on the bell housing and it's pretty crazy we've got the cam I labeled the cam sensor there and then this is the crank sensor and since this is about the same era, I was kind of surprised at this. I don't know if I can do it one-handed or not. Those suckers plug right in. So I know I'm going to have to make a cam signal to figure out that, but I can't believe that plugs right in there. I'm not even going to have to change any, splice any wire or anything there. So that is pretty awesome, but... Anyway, my kind of my overview here is so I have no Volkswagen wiring in here at all yet. And all my sensors for my gauges are all hooked up using the factory Dodge wiring. It'd be the same with any other vehicle. And just tape that up and clean that up. And then when I make my standalone harness, it's so small. I mean, it's like the size of the fuel lines. You add that in. And it just, it doesn't have to be this whole tied together electrical system. It's so easy to just leave them separate and then you know what's what. And anyway, that's just what I do. But that is, that is that. I think I'm going to go ahead and unplug this so I don't have to worry about it overflowing while I'm talking here. But it's pumping it out. I don't know how many gallons were left. <laughs> left in there but anyway just to finish up the little details now that I talked over fuel system and gauges um, we've got the intercooler pretty well mocked up um, the turbo is just about set up I need to get the, the actuator set up in the tuning so I can see where open and closed are on the veins and then I'll clock the the housing a little bit to fine-tune that so I haven't finished that all the way but this is what I ended up with my um, coolant lines I did have to splice a few things together here to get up to the bigger lines on this big f-350 radiator but it did turn out pretty good I've got my steam vent going right there to the upper hose so any bubbles should go right up to the top of the radiator, which is where I want them to go on this system, since I don't have a coolant bulb. And then, I, you pretty much already saw everything here, but the, the upper heater core hose there goes to the back, and lower one goes here. Let's see, I did it. This red hose is for my vacuum. And since I'm not running, I will have an N75 valve just to get its resistance value, but I won't have any vacuum lines hooked up there. So the only vacuum you can see is off of there. And then one hose going in for the Chrysler vacuum controlled stuff there. Should have plenty of room for my downpipe. Need to get started on that. And then I got to make an adapter here for the intake. But I got a nice one one piece of pipe here. Goes right from the turbo to the intercooler. That'll be 
pretty slick there. And let's see, what else have I kind of mocked up here? Um, yeah, the power steering, just mounting that Volkswagen reservoir there, got a little tight, but it all works pretty well. Um, radiator hoses are all, all good. And yeah, everything's pretty well mounted. Um, I've got, this is the kick down cable or the, for the AW4. We're going to wire that, get it set up on the, the Volkswagen pedal. Once I get that all in. And yeah, I'm pretty close to needing wiring. I'm waiting on a, a shift lever for the transmission. I didn't end up getting one of those with it. And I gotta make a bracket for the to hold the cable there. But thankfully everything's pretty similar since I'm still Chrysler as far as that stuff. And then I have my rail shifter hooked up. Or I have it ordered so I can get that hooked up to the AW4 so we can manually shift it after we'll put it in drive with the regular shift cable. And yeah, I, it's really getting down there. Um, I have been selling so many wiring harnesses, I ended up selling the one I was going to use on this thing. So probably going to end up making a just a custom one and build it from scratch. That way I can do a video on that. But one thing, I am definitely going to have to do like a some kind of a shield here to block air coming in. Because I definitely have determined some of my, what I thought were cooling issues on the Toyota is actually moving it back like I did here as well. It's sucking the in the engine bay air in on the Toyota and it's so sealed up there and I think maybe with that skid plate on that that Toyota it's getting like a backdraft I'm not sure but anyway blocking off airflow so it has to suck from the front made a huge difference in coolant temperatures on my Toyota especially with the AC on so I'll probably be doing the same thing there but I should do the same thing here and anyway yeah it is it is getting really close here i hope to be doing a test start video in the next episode so stay tuned guys it's it's coming together